With the election only 11 days away, every morning on the Pacific Breakfast Show, we are looking at the issues, the candidates, the parties, policies and stories to give you, our Radio 531PI listeners, as much information to make an informed decision come election day, the 23rd of September. As part of our election countdown this morning, we welcome to the Pacific Breakfast Show a live on the phone from Wellington, Mbale Nanda Kuitavuki, candidate for the United Future Party in Uohariu. A first-time candidate, Mbale, is a collections associate and social media ambassador for ANZ Bank. And on that note, we say uh, Nisa Yandra Vinak and a very warm welcome to the show this morning, Mbale. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Well, Mbale, let's start off with this one. If Damien Light is the Ryan Gosling of New Zealand politics, does that make you the Waisale Serevi of New Zealand politics? Yeah, that, that, uh, uh, I like the sound of that. I wouldn't go with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, uh, very, you know, great news, uh, of course, with uh, Damien Light uh, taking the spotlight, uh, maybe if only, you know, for the, the, the looks part in that. But, uh, Mbali, uh, you know, a, a little bit about yourself. So, I, I understand that you were previously uh, in Wellington Central, but now, of course, uh, standing at this year's election in Oharu Electric. Why? Um, yeah, look, that, that was a, a personal decision. Um, Ira is pretty much my hometown. Um, I'm a Tower guy, uh, born and bred, so it's pretty much just down the road from uh, Peter's old electorate. And when I had the conversation with um, Damien and Peter, uh, they pretty much uh, backed me, which which was um, very surprising at first because it was such a big role to fill and, and big shoes to fill. Um, so I was very uh, excited at that prospect. So um, it, it made sense for me as well um, to, to um, take over, you know, in, in my hometown. So I was really, really happy and, and ecstatic about that. Um, yeah. And Mbale, uh, of course, you mentioned Peter. Peter Dan, you know, uh, thirty uh, odd mm. years in uh, politics and such a, a big part of United Future. And of course, with his uh, resignation stating clearly, you know, that uh, he, he didn't think he, you know, his chances this year. So rather than that, he, you know, stood down. So in view of that and the long, you know, and storied career of uh, Peter Dan. Why then stand, uh, you know, if uh, if he sort of, you know, in such a stalled of the party, thinking that, oh, maybe his odds weren't too good at this year's election? Um, yeah, look, I can't um, deny what Peter has done for the party. It's it's pretty much a storied legacy. He's been unchallenged for 33 years. And to be part of a, you know, minority party and, and achieve that is, is such a big achievement. Um, so definitely, um, like I said, a uh, big, big legacy to follow. Um, but again, you know, we, we've seen uh, so many different things uh, in this year's elections that uh, you just never know what could happen. And you know, it, it's, if, if the stars align, I could end up being, you know, the next, the next guy in Ohio. And I'm going to be working really, really hard over the next couple of weeks uh, to try and make that happen. <laughs> And Bali, uh, Ohari, of course, uh, you know, always a, a hotly, uh, con, uh, you know, uh, contested seat. For those of us outside of the electorate, can you tell us a little bit about Ohari? Yeah, look, um, Ohari, it's it's quite a big um, span of, of um, land in terms of uh, the towns that it sort of encompasses. It's uh, Wade Town, uh, Karori, Johnsonville, Newlands, Tower. Churton Park, um, just to name some of the uh, the area, and it's an area that I call home. Um, I know the area so well. Um, Wellington Central's um, really just just the place I sort of uh, go in and out of work uh, from. So, uh, Oharu though is is the place where um, I find my friends. I play rugby. Um, it's the place where um, I went to college, primary school, intermediate, um, and it's it's a great area. Um, and it's a place that I would love to get more involved in in terms of the community, especially in Johnsonville, because um, I am a community volunteer within the Tower area. But sort of expanding my, my reach, uh, especially in Johnsonville, is, is something that um, I'm hoping to, to do more and more of. So it's, it's really a great area. And something I always tell people when um, they come to Tower, 
uh, especially which is my hometown, uh, life expectancy in Taos is, is 120. <laughs> I always joke about that because it's it's such a a sunny place, a warm place. It's it's the perfect town for me. It's my Paris. It's my uh, Washington DC. It's my uh, Suva. It's it's such a warm and encompassing town where where everyone is is well. Um, you know, no matter what um, race you are, you, it's it's such a a great town to live and and raise kids in. Um, and I just hope to sort of push that um, in, into the public eye more and more as the weeks come along. Mbale, in terms of United Future and, you know, some of the major uh, yeah. policies, especially, uh, uh, you know, with reference to our Pacifica community, can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah look, um, United Future always has um, an eye on future generations, um, especially for our Pacific Island communities. Um, we want to ensure that um, issues like um, personal issues such as, you know, the passing rate of, of NCA as an example, um, under United Future that would increase uh, because we would emphasize certain um, educational forums where uh, educating parents especially um, and dispelling uh, myths about uh, the education system within New Zealand is, is a, key, a key priority for us because it's about changing the, the cultural mindset of our parents to ensure that our kids are uh, given the best start possible within their colleges, within their high schools or intermediates, so that within our education system, um, our Pacific Island kids are making an impact and not just on the rugby field, not just on the basketball field. We're a smart people. We're, we're an intelligent people. And I absolutely believe that more can be done for our Pacific Island kids, especially in the years to come. And more and more we are seeing that emerge uh, now, but more can be done. You know, we can extract uh, these talented kids uh, from the classroom if, if the culture changes. Um, and and especially if, if we're introducing uh, policies such as free tertiary education, um, automatically if, if kids within colleges, our Pacific Island colleges, if they know that tertiary education is free, then all of a sudden a new pathway is opened, and what what may have uh, what what they may have thought of as possibly being a uh, a plumber or electrician suddenly becomes you know a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor. You know that all of a sudden becomes possible under uh, United Futures policy of having free tertiary education. So it's about giving our kids tangible and practical opportunities to ensure that their talent is not just confined to sports. Um, so that, that's a, a big belief of ours. You, you talk about uh, education in Bali. Uh, mm. What about, uh, you know, when we're looking at our Pacific community in particular, uh, you know, things like uh, uh, housing affordability, uh, poverty, you know, uh, what is it, the uh, uh, equity cap, uh, gap, you know, between uh, male and females. Can you tell us a bit more on, on those, uh, on those you know, uh, issues with regards to United Future? Yeah, that, that's definitely um, one of the uh, issues that we've, we've discussed as a party as well. Um, for me, myself, I've, I grew up in state housing um, in Linden, and I understand the, the difficulties that our Pacific Island people face, you know, from, from birth. You know, we're, we're not given, uh, we're not born with the silver spoon in our mouth, and we have to struggle and work hard to uh, even get to a point where we're sort of equal um, with, with other ethnicities. So. Specifically around housing, you know, we, we want to give uh, young families and uh, young couples and young Pacific Island communities and families an opportunity to own their own house um, because owning their own house, it, it opens up a whole new world of opportunity. Um, so rent to own housing, is, especially, which is, is one of our policies as well, it gives young Pacific Island communities and, and families and couples an opportunity to put their rent towards the deposit on their house and as the government is actually committing to building more houses specifically in Auckland uh, we want to get the community involved in terms of getting everyone around the table to figure out a solution of building more houses specifically within Auckland and Wellington and as the weeks progress we'll continue to announce more policy around where else in New Zealand will be continuing to 
build more houses because if if these policies specifically if they, they deal with um issues that cause you know poverty issues that cause uh the mentality of you know i'm not given the best start so um i'm just gonna do my best uh, or, or maybe just not do my best but if our pacific island community is given the best start possible you know with with rent to own housing with our education um policies as well our pacific island community can can really come to the forefront of this nation and we can show that you know we're, we're more than just athletes um and that's my belief and i, I strongly believe and I've, I've seen that um I've, I've been to some education forums down here and one reason i'm seeing really really talented uh young pacific Island architects and engineers coming through and they're showing that you know we, we are an intelligent people and and uh i want to show that more and more um as, as the weeks progress uh, but we have to deal with the issues that that cause poverty specifically um around you know financial education as another example um making sure that our pacific island people are educated on finance um so those are just some of the things that we're we're sort of um dealing with practically um in, in this year's elections but uh, before we go you know in terms of the the door knocking and hot on the uh, campaign trail for yourself what are some of the you know main issues that uh, you know constituents in the ohario electorate are voicing to you in terms of their concerns um it's it's definitely um there's a bit of traffic uh, issues in the Ohio area uh that's one of the issues that i'm sort of I haven't to answer questions about um there's also a lot of uh concerned parents uh, coming through about uh ridding child poverty uh which is another issue that I've, that I've had to answer uh, questions about and it's definitely or and also uh environmental issues as well so those are the three uh issues as well that I've had to uh answer specifically about a hurry and it's it's great to see uh such engaged uh, New Zealand voters when it, when it comes to forums because um, my belief is that child poverty we can we can end it we can end child poverty in our lifetime we can end uh, or we can turn back or slow down the environmental issues that uh, our world faces if, if uh, everyone comes and buys into the idea of you know another policy of, of ours that we have is is uh, conserving our environment for future generations because we don't want uh, our kids to just think of New Zealand as uh, a nice memory when we talk to our kids about it. We want them to enjoy what we enjoyed as kids. Um, so specifically, those are the three main issues that have um, been had to, I've been had to uh, answer questions about specifically. And uh, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll be able to solve some of these issues, um, you know, once I get in uh, as a local MP. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like that and always finishing with confidence. Well, uh, a very big thank you, Mbale Nandakuitavuki, uh, United Future Candidate for Ohario Electorate in Wellington. Uh, Nisa Ayandra Vinaka, Vinaka Vaka Levo, and wishing you all the very best uh, for the rest of the campaign. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day. Mode. Thank you, Brian. Thank you.